Now we're logging. Now we're logging. Now we are logging on the homestead, huh Jack? Yeah. What have we got here? Logs. <laughs> We've got a lot of logs. So, this is just a quick update. Uh, we were running around town today, so we didn't have time to make a, a, a heart racer. What are you doing? She is a courageous little thing. My heart racer. Courageous little thing. Terrier power. Engage. Anyway, so this is... A whole log truck full of logs. These are 38 footers. Uh, that's our biggest one. How big would you say this one is, Jack? Uh, Probably bigger than me. 22. How about 22 inches? Probably at the butt. Bigger then, than Heart Racer. These are all shorter ones. These are probably, well, they're random anywhere from 16s to 24s. No. And this is only half of the logs uh, that we have coming. We're going to have a, another one. So, any guesses on how many cords of wood are in this one load, load of logs? Papa, I just figured something out. How many cords do you think it is, Jack? A lot. But a... I've figured out how we weigh things now. How? You know how the old British used to weigh things in stone? Stone, right. We weigh them in heart racer. Oh. Well, that would be a lot of heart racers. This would be, I'd say, maybe 200 heart racer. <laughs> I think there's going to be a lot more than that. So these logs here are, if you notice, they're burnt right here. All of these have, they just, they're not burnt, but they just have a little bit of char on them. These were taken from up, up yonder Mount Fuji. Mount Fuji there to the north. And remember that big fire I was on last year? Well, this was standing wood or standing trees that the fire burned through and killed. And they logged them. And I have a good friend that works for a timber company. And I called him. I was expressing some interest in buying some loads, some logs for firewood. And he gave me a great deal. You know, a little, even a little bit below pulp price. It's standing. It was standing dead. So it's dry. Um, beautiful, nice Douglas fir. And so what we're going to use this for is this is going to be perfect for the firewood processor. Now, uh, someone's probably going to ask, well, how come you don't just cut your own timber? You know, I... I have plenty of timber. I have, you know, everything that you can see, all of that there. I don't like to cut it if I don't have to. And I got such a great deal on this. Um, it's kind of a friend price that I just couldn't turn it down. And we got one more coming tomorrow. Yeah. And, and this makes me happy that we don't have to go in the forest and listen to a loud chainsaw all day. Well, we're going to have to cut it. But one thing that I want to do is, of course, we've got the Dyna Firewood Processor. You know, that I told you I've got a whole bunch of things coming together. Uh, this is one another component of it. We're going to try to see if we can't cut uh, 20, 22 cords or two full log truck loads of wood in one day. That's going to be a lot of firewood. We will be set for firewood for a long time because we only burn about um, three, well, three and a half cords and we have a more efficient wood stove now. I so, only think that this would be about 50 heart racer. No, maybe 25. So the firewood processor can handle everything, anything up to about 18 inches. And I don't see anything here that isn't going to just be just perfect for that. Even the biggest one? Not this one. We'll mill this one into, into lumber. Or we can just cut it into rounds and split it. What do you think, Heart Racer? So I thought this was kind of cool. So tomorrow I was hoping to get a video of, the, of Ray un unloading it with a log truck. He's got a self-loader. Uh, he'll be back in the morning for another load, and I'll I'll share you, share that with you. But I just wasn't just wasn't here. So not too bad, huh, Jack? Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of fun. Do you think we can cut 20, 22, 24 cords of firewood in one day? Well, I'm hoping it won't be any day soon, but yeah, I think we could. Yeah, I think we can too. All right. So was there anything else? So we have more exciting things to come. Well, I can't share with you yet. It's still a surprise, but we are going to have, a, have to figure out a very clever way of getting these logs onto the firewood processor. But we'll have to keep that secret for now. All right. You get a new knife? Yeah. What is that? 
it is a more more can that kind of oh mora kind of, yeah mora where'd you get that at um one of the knife sharpeners at a mother's newspaper guy gave it to me but it's gotten rusty because it's carbon steel and uh, i cut an apple today and i oh isn't that amazing you cut that apple this morning and it's already rusting a little bit yeah and this was about an hour after it hasn't rusted anymore because i dried it off as quickly as i could but this is how much happened in about an hour so how will you what are you gonna do I'm gonna give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> you can put some oil on it. Yeah, yeah. that too. High carbon. So that's got a nice sheath on it. So how did you get this knife? I don't didn't even know where that came from. Um, well, one of the knife sharpeners at the Mother of News Fair, he gave it to me because there was he was having a like a exhibitation, an exhibit, and he. Uh, he, he was like doling them and then he was sharpening them and he asked me to do it on a uh, cinder block. So he's looking for uh, volunteers. You volunteered. Yeah. Oh, and then he let you keep the knife after he was done. Yeah. Is it sharp? Very. Let me see. I'll turn it where I can get that and see. Oh, that is sharp. I think he's shaved with this or one other knife. I'm not sure. All right. So there you have it. <laughs> Short and sweet video. Quick update. And we'll have uh, more tomorrow. Oh, also, let, I'm going to show you one more thing. Let's show them the apples we got today. Okay. So Jack and I went to town today. We were all day picking up supplies. And we came across a farmer who had some organic apples for sale. And we got these. We're going to be pressing apples. We're going to be making some apple cider uh, with the cider press. Uh, they're ready to go. And these are such a perfect mix. We have a mix of... Golden Delicious. You know the thing is, if you've had Golden Delicious before uh, from the store, you may have thought them a little bit mushy, you know, not not, not maybe overly sweet. I, I agree. Golden Delicious apples at the store are terrible. But here, we're in this part of the country, where the finest apples in the world grow, I'm not biased, off the tree, they're amazing. These are Johnny Golds. So it's a nice 50-50 mix of the sweet and the more tart, more sour, which makes the most wonderful apple cider. And we'll be using the double barrel press uh, to do that. So, yeah, there, that'll be, that's a, that's a lot of apples. I know exactly how many it is as far as pounds. Uh, put your guess in the comments. How many pounds do you think this is? Whoever guesses correctly will get a super honorable mention. Honorable mention, but uh, that's a pretty... Pretty good pile of apples. Jack and I, it's going to keep us very busy. I think we'll probably do it tomorrow. And uh, and we'll we'll definitely bring you along for that. I'll show you, if you're, those of you who are joining us haven't been, you know, with the channel that long, I'll show you the apple press uh, that I restored. A little bit about that, what we're going to use. So this is a traditional double barrel apple press uh, that I am very, feel very fortunate to have that I completely restored. I had to rebuild it. Everything but the top. You can see right there, built in. Wallace, what is that? Wallace Corcoran Company, Portland, Oregon. Man, how cool is that? Probably 150 years old. All original, except for the wooden frame. So just a quick story, I did videos on restoring this. This is called a double barrel press. It means it's got two barrels. You can have one person pressing using an ax handle and the other person can be in there grinding. But when I found this, uh, the only thing that I saw was this. I saw it was this was sticking out of a bunch of weeds and I tripped over it. It was at my old neighbor's house and, and I moved some grass and I looked around and it was, I realized what it was and, and that it was an apple press and it had the whole wooden frame had essentially just rotted into the ground and this was sitting on the ground. So I rebuilt everything. Even the, the steel rings here are original. I had to remake all of the wood, but every piece of wood on here, I had to re redo um, and I restored it. So this here you can see is the mechanism and it's got inside a grinder where you put your apples. Isn't that cool? Here's a big, whoops, here's a big heavy flywheel right there so once you keep it going but that's isn't that cool so this is a tradition we always have or we have every year where we press all of our apples and apple cider is and that's an american term most people think that's alcoholic but it's not 
uh, in, the, in, in the United States, apple cider is unpasteurized fresh apple juice. So we'll break this out tomorrow, give it a good cleaning, and we should be pressing probably around 30, I'm guessing 25 to 35 gallons. Thank you.